Welcome everyone. I'm Janine Howard, Coach Janine. I'm the owner of Dreamcatcher. And this is our first morning moto. I am a retired Marine, so sometimes the Marine in me comes out. I decided to do this blab because I just feel like, you know, we I know there's many of you we get up early. We're on Facebook, we're sharing. And Facebook and some of the other sites have just gotten a little bit, I consider nasty. They're almost exhausting. And I always start my day reading and saying a prayer. So I thought I would share that with you. And if I like doing it, then maybe others would be motivated, inspired, just gets us ready for the right mindset. So we're going to jump in. Okay, I see Judy's on. Judy, jump on board. And so, again, I'm just going to read. I like this book. It's one I had. I didn't run out to buy anything. I just, I found it years ago. And whatever, then I bought like almost the can't see version. So, big print. And again, this isn't for you to have to, Throw on makeup. You could say, hey, I have none on. My hair's in a ponytail. And yes, I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> Got my coffee. Let's just start our day on a positive note. Hi, Judy. Good morning. And, you know, let's see where this group takes us. I don't intend for us to stay on long. I know if we stay 30 minutes or an hour, I think that's that's more than enough. We all have businesses to run. But again, this is really just to start our day and be in a good place because that's, you know, that just carries over. So I'm going to stop babbling and I just want to read a section out of, again, I'll be reading from the daily readings from Become a Better You until we get a group going and we decide we have a better book or something else we want to follow. This is one I used to read all the time. I've had several of Joel Osteen's books and found that in the morning, they just really put me in the right place. So I'll read then. And his, you know, it's not many pages, so it's not like you guys sit here for 30 minutes. And listen to me go on and on. <laughs> I'll read and then we'll just, I'll just open it up and I want to hear your thoughts. And again, this is to get us, all of us in a good place to start the day along with our coffee because that's what we need <laughs> that's our fuel this is our fuel the coffee is our fuel and hopefully this group will be part of the fuel to get us going every day so i'm gonna get going and i'm just gonna follow the format he has here i'm not gonna try to make up my own because i haven't had enough coffee to do that so it's called you can stretch scripture reading to become a better you john 14 1 14. i tell you the truth anyone who believes in me will do the same works i have done and even greater works because i am going to be with the father jesus speaking in john 14 12. the famous architect frank lloyd wright designed many beautiful buildings homes and other magnificent structures. Toward the end of his career, a reporter asked him, of your many beautiful designs, which one is your favorite? Without missing a beat, Frank Lloyd Wright answered, my next one. Frank Lloyd Wright understood the principle of stretching, constantly pressing forward, never being satisfied simply with past successes. The entire world is waiting for your next adventure. Too many people are living far below their potential. They have many gifts and talents and so much more going for them. But they've become comfortable, settled where they are, and lately become too easily satisfied. I often hear people making excuses for stagnating in their personal growth. I've achieved as much as possible. Compared to other people, I'm do doing pretty well. I've gone as far as my parents did. That's great. But God wants you to go further. He's a progressive God, and he wants every generation to become increasingly, to be increasing in happiness, success, and significance. 
no matter where you are in life, God has more in store. He never wants us to quit growing. We should always be reaching for new heights in our abilities, in our spiritual walk, in our finances, careers, and personal relationships. We all have areas where we can come up higher. We may have achieved a certain level of success, but there are always new challenges, other mountains to climb. There are new dreams and goals that we can pursue. God never performs his greatest feats in your yesterdays. God wants you to be more blessed tomorrow than you are today. No doubt, God has already done a lot in your past. He's opened doors for you that nobody else could open. Maybe he's given you a wonderful family and home. Perhaps he has caused you to be promoted, giving you favor with your employer or supervisors. That is marvelous, and you should thank God for all that he has done for you. But be careful. Sometimes when you're enjoying life, it's easy to become complacent, to get satisfied, and think, yes, God's been good to me. I can't complain. I've achieved my goals. I've reached my limits. But God never performs his greatest feats in your yesterdays. He may have done wonders in the past, but you haven't seen anything yet. The best is yet to come. Don't allow your life to become dull. Keep dreaming, hoping, and planning for new projects, experiences, and adventures with God. Now, I like that one. It's, I've discovered that God likes to outdo himself. He wants to show his favor in your life in greater ways today than he did yesterday. He wants you to be more blessed tomorrow than you are today. He intends for you to have a greater impact on the world than you have had. That means if you're a teacher, you haven't taught your best lesson yet. If you're a builder, you haven't built your best home yet. If you're a business person, you haven't negotiated your best deal yet. It's time to get your hopes up, enlarge your vision, and get ready for new things that God has on the horizon. Your best days are not behind you, they're in front of you. So, what do you think about that? Very motivating. Very motivating this morning. You know, when I think about that and I think about, you know, just life and how I look at how my grandparents and, you know, generations in my family, you go to school, you graduate, you get a job. And, you know, as a business and career coach, I'm constantly stressing self-improvement, self-improvement. We don't stop learning. We don't stop learning. Mm -hmm. We can't become stagnant in today anyway, or you become obsolete. We have to keep growing and we're mm -hmm. living longer. You know, my grandma passed away at 101 last year. So to me, that was like, okay, I was 51 last year. It was, I got another 50. I'm living. How am I going to live that? And I've had several people hire me in the, this past year that really got me thinking who were pushing towards 70. And I've had clients before, you know, I had an 84 year old before who wanted to know what's my next step? What's the next life going to look like? And it was fun helping them design that. And I think it speaks right back to this. We're not done. No. We may have had a good life yesterday or good blessings, but we're still always growing and evolving. And whatever happened yesterday, God wasn't done with that. He's not saying that's as good as it gets. That's he, right. That's expecting right. us to step up and use the gifts we were given. Yes. And it's, it's a shame if we don't use them to their maximum capacity and I just really believe that we're here for a reason and we have to find that reason and then we have to just let God show off through us. Oh, I like that. Let God show off through us. Mm -hmm. We have to be the window. You know, our, I think our soul is like the window and we have to let people see that. And it's like not always that. popular. I'm sorry. 
it's not it's not always the popular thing to do in today's culture, but that's just too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you know. God is our father, head of our family, our household, us, and every father wants what's best for their family, their yes. children, meaning us. So I don't think he said, okay, you're going to do this and be miserable and you get to have the charm mm -hmm. life. And no, it's every, you know, we need those life lessons. I mean, my life stinks at times. <laughs> I've had some, you know, hard life lessons, but guess what? They changed who I am living through those hardships. It, mm -hmm. it teaches you who you are. It makes you dig, you know, it's kind of that Marine Corps thing. You know, dig deep to see how tough you can really be. You know, there's times I wanted to throw the pack down in my helmet and stomp off mad and say, I'm not doing this. But no, you just, <laughs> I'm just going to get to the top of that hill or finish this run with the guys and do it. And, you know, I think those lessons are there and it's within your, it's, it's that heart. It's that soul of yeah. how much can you give back? How much can you do to step up to the plate and use the gifts mm -hmm. that you were given? So. Oh, thank goodness he gave us morning coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So with this passage and some of these words, I want you to think about how you're going to plan your day. Hopefully you've got a day planner. Yes, you know, I, I have <laughs> mine, one I created just for me. But you can look at it. Look at who you're going to encounter, who, who's going to be blessed by your presence today, and how will you impact them? What blessings will you share? Now, you know, as business owners, God doesn't want us to give away, you know, he wants us to survive, to to live. He gave us these talents to earn a living, but it doesn't mean you can't give something back to people and how. So just kind of look about at how will you share the gifts and the talents you're given? You know, is it finishing, you know, Judy, I know you're a virtual assistant, so will you be doing the best work possible for those clients today and pointing out to them how to make them shine even bigger and brighter than what you already do. Mm -hmm. And just think about, you know, sometimes I, I say, you know, you need people and we just, you know, again, I kind of go back to Facebook. I just find Facebook getting, you know, I use it for business. I teach it, but I'm finding it very mentally draining and I don't like yes. it. It's just, I opened up this morning and it was like already the political nastiness and bashing and the bashing was from satire sites. Like people aren't <laughs> yes. even paying attention to what they're sharing and I'm like, oh my God, that's not how I want to start my day. Let me just, and so I really hope people are going to be jumping on board here and finding some morning motivation, inspiration in this morning moto with coffee, no makeup required, please. Don't think you gotta get dressed up to come pop up on here, because you don't. You can chat in the comment window if you don't wanna hop on an open seat. We still have open seats for anybody that wants to jump on board. But you know, it's, I think, starting the day with a kind heart, knowing God's got your back. It's a reminder, and sometimes we do have to remind ourselves, God's got our back. He's not holding me by my ponytail, holding me down. No, that's the other one at work. Yes. And, you know, it, it is a lot about the mindset and the heart. I see a lot of people talking about heart-centered, you know, coaching, heart-centered therapy. And, I, you know, I'm a psych major, so... I remember, gosh, back in 2006, one of the techniques I learned on channeling your emotions was your heart is the one sending the signal to the brain on how to react, not the other way around. So pay attention to what your heart is doing. Is your heart at peace or is it like beating and crazy? Like you're out on a, you know, a 10 mile run and you're out, you're going to win it. 
but what's the heart doing? That's setting the tone for a lot of the things. So pay attention to your heart today. Start your day in a ah, nice place. You see, we have Dr. Will Moreland joining us. Good morning. Hop in a seat if you want to share. We're just talking about starting our day in a good place and being the best that we can be, along with sipping our morning coffee. So any other thoughts about getting our day started? There is a prayer, and if it's okay with everyone, I will read this prayer, and we can read it, you know, contemplate it together. I do think there is power in prayer, and I think it's time. Yes. You know, I I did a spiritual course with Allie Brown last year, and I, I just really, the group of people I was in that course with, it was a group of women. There was a few men. And it was like, you know, it's time to stop hiding behind being afraid to share that we love God and that type of thing. So I'm just going to read this. And I think it will also it's part of the it's part of the book. It's part of the chapter. And I think it will um, continue on this discussion. So today's prayer to become a better you. Father, I want to have my vision stretched. I want to be stretched by you. I no longer want the world outside me or my thoughts within me to determine my limitations. I'm trusting you to help me become the better me you already see. Amen. Well, does that make your heart feel? Mm -hmm. You know, when you... Um, to me, when I read that or I think about, you know the role God has in my life is not so lonely. You know, being a business owner, you know, being single can be very lonely at times. You know, I've got Miss Savannah here. Miss Savannah is my blue pit. She's laying here just kind of looking at me like, oh, we're not going for a run yet. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, it can life can be lonely. We've got all these people on Facebook, Twitter, all our followers, LinkedIn, but it can still be lonely. Especially when you're trying to stretch and grow professionally, personally, academically. And you're, you know, it's that circle of influence who's trying to keep you back because they're afraid you're going to outgrow them. Mm -hmm. But knowing, you know what, you were put here for a purpose. It's time to step up and be who you're supposed to be. It doesn't matter what your age is. And I think we're constantly reinventing ourselves. You know, when I work with veterans, I always say, I think it's veterans have probably the best position in life because we retire at 20 and we can totally reinvent ourselves if we want. What other person or occupation can do that without getting a lot of flack from somebody else? Most people are afraid to leave their profession to do something else. But as a veteran, it's like, okay, my 20s over. And I find the women, we all <laughs> tend to go into something totally different. Most of my students are nursing students or they want to be a psychologist or a social worker. And the men go right, they want a civilian job doing exactly what they just did in the military. And I'm like, really? You don't want to try something new? You don't want to take up knitting, crocheting, or basket weaving, or dog grooming, or become a better veteran or something, and they're like, no, I want to count nuts and bolts, or do this, or do that, and <laughs> I think they're kind of missing out, but you know what, it's not my life to live, I think they'll, maybe hopefully when it's, you know, what we consider in America official retirement age, they'll look at a new reinvention, so I think it's okay to switch directions you know you got your little road map and you're going this goal that goal but sometimes you realize you know i was what eight nine months into working as a therapist sitting there sitting there you know doing my uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, thinking janine what have you gotten yourself into i was halfway through my phd program and realized 
I don't have the personality to listen to this because these people aren't wanting to change who they are to have a better life. I, I really felt like I was wasting my time. But you know what? It was okay. I have reinvented into I'm a much better coach. I'm better as a professor teaching psychology than sitting there having to follow the rules. I'd have been sued to death because, you know, with my mouth I and I'm so action oriented. Oh, no, 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 no. But it's okay to change paths. It's okay to, you know, have three, four different businesses and switch what you're doing. It's okay. And I think that's what today is talking about stretching and being who you want to be. You know, I could come up with a whole new game plan and you know what? So what if I have to go back to school for another 10 years? My grandma lived 101. That means I've got another 50, 49 of living if I can live as long as she did. So got plenty of time to, to live my life purpose and do what I'm supposed to do. But today's a new day and I think it's a day to, you know, do good things and be in a good place. So I'd love to hear what everyone's going to do today to step up and live their purpose and maybe stretch themselves a little bit. I think just being on this blab is stretching. I agree. <laughs> you know, I, I jumped on board yesterday for the first time. It's Judy and another of my team members jumped on board with me and we had fun with it. And I listened to a few blabs in the afternoon, and so now I'm full of ideas on how, as business owners, we can use this. But again, my purpose of this early morning blab is really just to get us in the right mindset so we can all have a wonderful day. And look at the, you know, my desk right now is surrounded by mess and piles, but feel inspired by that to, to go out there and make things mm -hmm. happen. So I'd love to hear what y'all are going to do. Or what you're even feeling now. Is this helping or should I just shut up and stop after I read the passage and, and the and the blab? To me, tell me. Like, to me, it's like a free coaching session, to be honest <laughs> with you. That little morning motivation. Um, because you always make me feel better, number one. And um, Thank you. I'm Thank sorry, you. I'm on. I'm on two screens here. I need next blab. I have to switch screens. So that's why you're seeing half my face. <laughs> um, but it's very motivating to me to um, be have that moment, that quiet time in the morning and, you know, let the Holy Spirit come in and just bless my day. I know everything's going to be all right today. I'm going to do something brand new. I'm going to meet with a new business owner um, for my business. Uh, she's been in business a long time and um, I'm going to do a new chore that I've never done before, but it's something that I just recently learned to do. So I'm going to just pray about it, do a good job and um, make a fair business practice and, um, you know, see what happens. And that's going to be my day. Yay. Yay. So I'm excited about that. Great. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to jump on? We still got a couple seats here on the blab. You can have four people. So jump on board if you want. Jump in a seat. Share us what you're going to do today or inspire us. Leave us motivated. Share something with us. It's just a good way to start our morning, getting energized by each other. And if you don't want to, again, you don't need makeup, don't need to shave, don't need to be, you know, you got to be dressed a little bit. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is not meant to stress anybody out to where yeah. I could, when I was setting it up, I thought, oh, somebody's going to say, well, I've got to get up and shower and do my hair and my makeup. And I'm thinking, no, no, because I'm doing this before I go out for a run. I think this is the perfect time. We all are, we're kind of in that. That waking up fog of we've got our coffee, we'd normally be on Facebook. I feel like this is going to be a bit more um, purposeful, if that's a word. Yeah. And better way for me to spend my time than just liking and sharing on Facebook. Sylvia, welcome. Feel free to hop in a seat and 
join us in our morning lab. We're having coffee and just talking about starting our day and getting in a right right place, a right mindset to do that. For anyone that's new, you just have to click the purple box and you can sit with me and we can be <laughs> students this morning of Coach Janine. Don't make me sit by myself. <laughs> Aww. But it's so much fun. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the hot seat this morning. <laughs> no, you're not in the hot seat. We're just, this is our first morning moto, morning moto blah. Moto is a Marine Corps term that, and I'm a retired Marine, so that's where that comes from. Moto, motivation, inspiration. I'm well, not a fake, morning. anybody that's attended my events knows I'm not the fake raw, raw, raw girl. I'm very practical. So it's it's not the fakiness. It, it's truly, you know, what's in your heart, putting God in your heart and listening. Sometimes you just got to shut up and listen to him. <laughs> and when I go to mass on Sunday, it's I have one of my normal prayers going is I promise to listen. Tell me what I'm supposed to be doing and I promise to listen. I'll shut up and listen. And sometimes that's the hard part. You've got all the chatter from other social media, from families and friends. I think the biggest um, killjoy or phrase that just sets me off is when somebody says, you should. And I so bad want to grab that finger and break it and say, why should I? And, it, and I realize when I hear certain people that just like, when they say that, my blood pressure is like immediately rising. The heart is going, ah, and I want to just, you know, I'm not listening because I've already tuned them out with that phrase, but somebody else could rephrase it. And I have a friend who's good at that. He'll say, have you, he'll, he'll do the little, have you ever thought about, and, the, and just the gentleness of his wording is like, my mind goes, oh, no, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> but it has such a different, that you should, to me, is so shaming. And again, I just, eh, I'm not listening to the, have you ever thought about, oh, it makes it more receptive. So even that interpersonal communication that we do can start the day off bad. You know, and I, I catch myself, it's like, I don't, I don't like the one-uppers, the you shoulds. So, you know, sometimes you do have to just, mm -hmm, okay, be quiet, listen. And and I have one friend who I could just, ah, and I'll just, and she's like, what does that mean? You're doing that again. What does it mean? And I'm thinking to myself, it means I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so... Even just, you know, again, I'm going to just read this one passage. I'm not reading the whole thing again, but um, the part, it says, he intends for you to have a greater impact on the world than you've had. And that means, again, if you're a teacher, you haven't taught your best lesson. If you're, you know, a nurse, you you're still can be more caring. As a, you know, I'm a coach. I can, I can still help and be more impactful. And I have to every day, it's that, how can I be better? Because we do have gifts, and I do think we need to use them. So, again, we got some more people jumping on. We got Marcus, welcome. Jump on in, anybody that wants to jump in and, and just share your thoughts on this, on how to be a better you, how to stretch and continually grow and not be complacent. Because we don't, you know, I always think complacent people – are the ones that have stopped living, stopped dreaming, and they become the grouchy old people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my daughter will say, Mom, you're being that grouchy old person. Stop it. And I'll, I will have to, you know, okay, am I or am I valid in whatever it is I'm becoming a grouchy old person in? So I think we're, kind, we're constantly in that state of awareness or need to be operating in a state of awareness. And it, again, it goes back to following that heart. When you're starting to feel that 
you know, when I'm being that grouchy old woman, I, I feel it. I feel it in my heart. I'm being mean. I'm being <laughs> miserable. So, hope everyone goes off and has a wonderful day and not a becoming the grouchy, grouchy person. Because, again, every day is a new day and God is going to outdo himself in your life. It's pretty exciting. And I think, you know, I, I have a friend who always say I'm positive. And I do, you know, I've had things happen. My life has not been a charmed life. I could go on and on but we'll and tell you all the horrible things. But you know what? It's To me, it's that perception. It's how you view it. It's that taking the lemons and making lemonade. Or a really good um, lemon shot. <laughs> I mean, it's too early for that. <laughs> but you have, you know, sometimes life is just so horrible. You have, it's all you can do is laugh and try to find really some positive in it and think about, you know, what's going on. I had, there was a day or a week, it seemed like every everybody was being mean and nasty. All the mean and nasty. And there's been a lot of mean and nasty lately. I've had several clients get, I talked to another one yesterday who people on Facebook have been posting mean and nasty things. And I don't know what their purpose is, if they're hoping just to, you know, they're not valid complaints. It's one thing if it was a valid complaint, but these are just made up mean and nasty things. And I just thought, wow, God's got something really great in store because he is cleaning the house around <laughs> me. And I can't wait. And that is part of the setting up for the next phase. You know, he can't give you more if you can't control or handle or use properly what he's already given you. You've got to, mm -hmm. you know, that's where the lesson on the finances, the, the career, everything is a stepping stone. You got to have your finances in order, in order to bring in more, you, you know, it is that laws of attraction. And, you know, if you pay attention to laws of attraction, the last part is action. You have to take the action. It's just not wishful thinking. And, and prayer isn't wishful thinking and magic fairy dust. It's not a magic genie or a, you know, magic coffee cup where I have my morning <laughs> coffee and pray and poof, everything is a perfect day. No, I have to pray. And one thing I learned last year, it was really cool. It made sense because I was raised very strict Catholic. And I always say we don't, as Catholics, I wasn't taught how to pray. I was taught to pray. I was taught to say the rosary, but I wasn't taught to feel it. I wasn't taught to make up my own prayers. That's still awkward for me. But I can, I can read a book. I can say the rosary. and uh, I can say the rosary in record time. Not that it's going to do me any good, but putting the heart in it was missing. And the best, one of the best things I learned in this course I took last year was when you pray, you're turning the worry over to God. Mm -hmm. When you worry, you're taking ownership back and saying, you can't handle it. So I'm going to handle it. And I'm like, Ooh, that's really, um, ballsy. <laughs> I don't want to mm -hmm. make him mad. <laughs> You know, because again, he's our father. He wants us to be happy. So let him do his job. Let him be the father and handle the stuff that we can't handle. Today, make sure, you know, make it a conscious decision that if you catch yourself worrying about something, that you just say, God, you've got this. I can't. This is bigger than me. I'm not, I don't even have a clue what I'm doing with it. Please take it. I trust you've got it. And you know what? When you turn that worry over, it again, uh, it frees you up so you can go back to focusing on delivering your life purpose, living, delivering. I think they're kind of the same because when you're living your purpose, you're sharing your blessings with others, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, the best baker in the world or, you know, I use my lawn care service, you know, they're fabulous at what they do. They love it. Not my thing. I can go out and fuss with the flowers, but I do not want to be standing there trying to edge the sidewalk. No. But you know what? My neighbor next to me, 
moved away. He's in the military. I think almost three years ago. Guess what? When they mow my lawn, they mow his lawn. Do they charge him? No. That's their way of giving back. It's like, don't worry about it. We know you don't want to live next. To, I've got a tiny yard. He's got a big yard. I don't want to live next to something that where the grass is higher than me by now. So they mow it for free. They keep it mowed. That's, you know, they're loving what they do. They're sharing their gifts. They're spreading the joy. Know your limits on what you can, you know, share. But, you know, for free, because we're all probably business owners, professionals. We're trying to make a living. And God doesn't, you know, the more you make, the more you can share. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, the more you can help your church, your you know, your favorite cause. I look over here at Miss Savannah Sleeping, Pitbull Rescues, whatever it is. So, <sighs> and I see Judy just sitting there, just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just I'm just thinking. enjoying, I'm just enjoying my morning, my morning moto. Oh, good, good. I'd love to hear from anybody again. Open seats here, <laughs> jump on board, share your thoughts on how you're going to. Have a great day. If you're not here, you're on another time zone. How you're, Tell us how your day's going. What do you do to stay positive and motivated when sometimes the world feels like it's just everybody's against you? I'd love to hear your tips. Don't make me do all the talking, people. Don't make me do all the blabbing. <laughs> I think this is a perfect message or platform, blab. We can blab. So, all righty. Do we are we done? Do we? You know, again, this is our first one. I have no expectation. You know, we're not going to drag this on forever. So, if we're done, we can be done. You know, I walked maybe an hour, hoping people would chat. But this will be. Um, I guess I'll do this. I'll just. I don't know. Do I have a plan when I set this up? Not really. I think we'll do it every Monday through Friday. I don't know about Saturday. Sunday I'll be up scrambling to get to Mass at this time. And I'm sure most people will be too. So I think it'll be a Monday through Friday. And so I hope everybody comes back. I And if you like this morning's platform or if you got a different book or a passage, and if you, you know, become a regular and want to, and we want to rotate somebody else likes Joyce Meyer or you have a favorite and we want to rotate who who shares a, a morning inspiration I'm, I'm open to that I'm open to making this pleasant for everyone I want everybody to leave inspired and motivated to go forward energized with their morning coffee again no makeup required guys you don't have to shave and look good you could be in I'm in pajamas I'm gonna go out for a run as soon as the Sun shows up here hopefully it shows up today after yesterday's mess but you know no makeup required nothing fancy grab your coffee get get inspired motivated every morning uh, I just want to remind you God never performs his greatest feats in your yesterdays God wants you to be more blessed tomorrow than you are today so remember you may have had a fabulous day yesterday but today is going to be even more fabulous and tomorrow is going to be even better it's all laying that foundation it all starts here even when somebody's being ugly to you you know what and I found this I, I got to teach interpersonal psychology this past summer and it was a wonderful experience I think I learned as much as the students did I had never taught that course I think I probably had it in undergrad and forgot I took it but the one one of the takeaways from that course when I taught it was you know when you're dealing with some really with anybody take a minute before you react to think about mm -hmm. what are they really really experiencing what is the real issue somebody may be you know just mean and nasty and hate everything about you and your business and the service you provide but it's like really but what 
is the real issue going on here. It's not these things that you're, you're, there's something more that's setting you off. And if we can take time, which, you know, we're a fast paced moving society. I talk fast, walk fast, eat fast, all of that, except run. I don't run fast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. I'm out there poking along and then my knee hurts, my back hurts. And I was like, how did I let myself get so out of shape? But if you could just take a few minutes and just, you know, again, it's some of that's just zipping the lip and listening to the nonverbal. And just sometimes you have to ask them, what's, what's the real issue? What is really going on? And they may change their story three, four times. And that's when you really know they're, they're still not telling you everything. What is the real issue? And Judy, you're going to a meeting today. They may have some, you know, a lot of people like to make everything look perfect. But you mm -hmm. can't always help people if they're in that, I'm so perfect. You know, I, I always kind of joke, we go to the doctor and what does he say? How are you? And what mm -hmm. do we say? I'm fine. fine. It's like, no, you're not. You're at the doctor for a reason. Tell him why you're there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with who we're dealing with throughout the day it's it's taking time to say no you're i'm not getting that i'm seeing a little slump in the shoulders or you know the eyes aren't as shiny and sparkly and happy what's really going on mm -hmm. So that's my, you know what, I'm going to challenge you all to do that today. Just take a few extra minutes and really try to observe the nonverbal language going on, the nonverbal communication, and really find what's going on. Because that's when your magic, your helping, your delivery of your services and your purpose can take place. Is when you really step into you know trying to understand somebody else's position where they are right now and sometimes people won't let you but you know at least you know you've tried mm -hmm. and again that's going to help you deliver the best purpose you know judy you're going to go to that meeting today and again as a business owner i'm sure they're going to be like oh we are perfect we are this we are that and it's like mm -hmm. well tell me the real thing really mm -hmm. and you know with the people i work with I need them to tell me to be 100% vulnerable and tell me those things that they don't tell me I can't totally help them. It, it'll be a surface helping, but it's not at the level where the magic is going to happen. I need to know the ugly, the deep and mm -hmm. ugly so that I can help them. Mm -hmm. So. Kathleen, welcome. We're just here talking about how we're going to have a motivating, motivational, inspiring day and keep, you know, and part of it is keeping ourselves healthy. While we're trying to share our message with others, it is a little bit of that self care too. So I hope everyone is going to participate in some way of self care other than their morning coffee <laughs> which i think is probably almost everyone in america's morning way of self-care is the first thing we i think we all do we probably i think I, I read yesterday i couldn't remember what the number is but it was very high how many people check their cell phone before they even get out of bed they check facebook and things mm -hmm. and then what do we do we stumble we stumble we turn on a light we go down and start the coffee feed the dog feed the cat and then hopefully we stand there and look at the coffee pot until it's done. But I hope you do take time to feed yourself, whether it's yes. exercise, reading something, even making this part of your morning self-care, I think is going to be wonderful. Like I said, we'll be back every mo every Monday through Friday. Thank you. Have a great evening. We've got body body talk. Ah, oh, he's in Australia, and he's got to get ready for his evening. 
So I'm trying to read. Okay, I think that was Kathleen on. Have a great mm -hmm. evening, Kathleen. We'll be back here tomorrow. So this could be a great way to end your evening too if you're not That's starting true. your morning like we are. Because, you know, you can't go to bed with a grouchy attitude either. Mm -hmm. Or it'll just keep you up at night. So part of that, you know, you got to take care of you as much as you're taking care of everyone else. So I hope this can be part of everyone's morning of, you know, a, a self-care, mind and body, getting mentally prepared for the day, having a good day. Because again, God wants us to have a good day. He, you know, he doesn't say, you know, or choose. It's not like he's got a Rolodex up there and he's sitting there going, okay, <laughs> yeah. this person today is, you know, it's how we choose to view what is going on. Mm -hmm. I think we could, you know, we would all be a miserable society if we focused on the negative. But it's truly finding the joy, finding you know, the positive. And like I said, I'd be a miserable person if I didn't. That and it's up to us to create that joy. Again. I guess I put <laughs> her to sleep. <laughs> so, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day. Remember to, you know, I want to, tomorrow I hope to, everybody jumps on. You're not so shy and quiet, or at least in the comment window. Share with us how you stretched personally and professionally today to grow so that you can be the best you. You know, I, I just think that's what we're supposed to be. There's, you know, we all have untapped dreams. When I first started, first, you know, I'm not an expo person. I can't stand them. The first one, though, I ever did, this elderly woman, she says, oh, I'm too old to dream. And I remember I was just like, uh-uh, no, we're never too old to dream. That's what keeps us alive. That's what keeps us fun. And it's those new experiences and challenging ourselves. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, I used to always tell myself, you know, I'd look at a new situation kind of like, mm. first, you know, it's like fears holding me back. And I'm like, hmm. How many people have done this before me and nobody's died or we wouldn't be doing this because they'd be sued, you know, somebody's parents would have written a congressman. So I guess it's okay. I just need to do this. And, you know, that's a lot of life. It's just, just do it. Just do it. What's the worst that can happen? No, no means next. So... Everyone, get out there and have an amazing day. I encourage you to just try to find the good in the bad and stay positive. Pay attention to what's going on in the heart. Pay attention to what's going on in your heart because your heart is what's going to tell the brain how to react. Wow, did y'all just hear that? Somebody's <laughs> racing off to work. That's what I love about working from home. I don't have to be part of that rat race. <laughs> And stuck in traffic this morning. I can kind of I'll keep looking out the window. Is the sun up yet? I see it slowly coming up through beauty's curtains. But mm -hmm. now I'll have to, I would have to fight all the traffic of the kids going to school. And moms around here do not stop for old women trying to run at a crosswalk. I will stand there forever. And if I'm walking Savannah, they're definitely not going to stop for me. So it's trying to find the joy in some of this chaos. It's... Um, life life is fun life is interesting and life is meant to be lived so don't be stagnant again let's do this I'm gonna just read this prayer one more time I know some people have jumped on board which I love and if anybody wants to hop in a empty seat go for it I'm gonna read this prayer just one more time before we sign off and get get busy with our busy days so again, prayer to become a better you for today. Father, I want to have my vision stretched. I want to be stretched by you. I no longer want the world outside me or my thoughts within me to determine my limitations. 
I'm trusting you to help me become the better, better me you already see. Mm -hmm. Amen, people. I just think he's got something big planned for us. So everyone go off and have a very blessed day. Share your gifts and talents. Be bold and daring. Do not play weak and mild or weak and wimpy. Just, you know, I, I tell some of my clients and even some friends will say, how do you do certain things? I said, you know, even jumping on this blab that I know nothing about mm -hmm. other than what I, I know about this much. You know what? You just take a deep breath and you do it. So as we end, I'm going to challenge everyone to do this morning exercise. When I did work as a therapist and I did group therapy with the students, my population were developmentally challenged teenagers with a dual diagnosis. So I was always more teaching them a relaxation technique. So this exercise can be done anywhere. It's called smell the roses, blow out the candles. I don't remember where I learned it, but, but it works. You can do it anywhere. So if you're sitting, that's fine. Just take a deep breath up. Breathe in like you're smelling the roses, like somebody gave you a bouquet of roses. I've got, I got one that needs replaced here. Aww. So you take that deep breath. So a deep breath. And slowly exhale like you're blowing out birthday candles. What do you got? And I'm 50, I'm almost 52, so I got a lot of candles to blow out, so I got to go. Another deep breath. Exhale slowly. One more deep breath. And exhale slowly. And just a tidbit, the reason you do you breathe in slowly is because it takes about 13 seconds for the fresh oxygen to get to your brain to calm and set a new tone. You want the fresh oxygen. So if you're in traffic and having road rage, just sit there and, I mean, you don't have to do the whole arm thing, but you can do this and get some fresh oxygen. You're with a client, you're in a negotiation, and somebody is just hitting your buttons. You can politely sit here and, and do this, and they'll just think you're, you know, they may be watching the shoulders come up and down, but maybe not because, you know what, most people are so busy blab and they're not paying attention to the other person in the exchange of conversation but a funny story before i go i was i had two with this really the, stu the students the clients again they were teenagers mostly boys and we'd be doing this and one of them said at the end i would have them reach down and stretch and one of them says to me one day he says reach up and say hello to everybody up there and I thought that was cute. And then he said, and then when we stretch down, shake out all the negativity, send the negativity down there. And it was so cute watching him say, down there, shake it and say, you get all the bad. But I just love that. Say hello to everybody up there and shake out the negativity. So that kind of adds some humor to it. But one day I was, my buttons were being pushed and the one client says, Miss Janine, you need to stop and breathe. And I was like, ooh, he's been paying attention because we I was working with them on paying attention to body language of each other because they were pushing each other's buttons. And then he says real loud, everybody stop. We need to breathe. Miss Janine needs to breathe. <laughs> he led everybody in the breathing exercise. And, of course, it, it breaks the mood. It kind of, you know, when somebody does that, you like, Oh my goodness, he's right. I need to breathe. So take this exercise with you today. Use it if you need to. Share it with your coworkers or your clients or your patients, whoever you're working with. Have an amazing day. Hi, Karen. I'm glad you're back. It was fun. We learned a lot from Karen. Jumped on. She taught us a lot yesterday that we didn't know when we were practicing this. So we're very happy to see her on board. Again, we'll be back tomorrow at 6 a.m. No makeup required. See, I have no makeup on. My hair, I just threw it in a ponytail. I'm still in pajamas. 
grab your coffee. And again, I'll just be reading a passage. We'll be discussing it, sharing about our day, getting ready for our day. But if you want to bring a different passage to read, I am all for that. Hey, Coach Karen, we're on Eastern Time, too. 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, I chose that time because I know most of my people are on Facebook at that time. Actually, they get on there about 4 a.m., anywhere from 4 on up. So I thought 6 is a good time. We're kind of getting ready. If you're getting ready, maybe you're still listening, and that's what some of you are doing instead of jumping in the seat. But tomorrow, I'd love to see more people jump in the seat, and I'd love to hear about your day. So everyone, please have a very blessed day, and we'll be back tomorrow for another Morning Moto. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. And let's see if I know how to...